Welcome again, friends, to another short yet biblical lesson in the ongoing series. Hey, Doc, stop lying on Jesus, and we got a thriller for you today. And uh, we were reading in the 25th chapter in the book of uh, Numbers, uh, starting around, the, well, we read the whole chapter, but starting at the sixth verse. And and you hey, y'all got to hear this. Now, yeah, y'all need to hear this. Y'all really need to hear this. Numbers, uh, uh, 20, uh, 25th chapter. I'm going to start reading at the sixth verse, though. And it said, And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren at the Midianish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, this was Aaron, the priest's uh, grandson, a uh, priest saw it, he rose up among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man, uh, the man of Israel, into the tent and thrust both of them through. Uh, the man of Israel and the woman threw her belly, so the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord uh, spake unto Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, had turned my wrath away from uh, the children of Israel while he, uh, while he was zealous for my sake among them that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore, say, behold, I give unto him, this is Phineas, my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even in the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement uh, for the sin, uh, for the, uh, made an atonement for the children of Israel. And listen, we want to get right to this today. We, we want to briefly speak with you from uh, the thought of uh, avoiding future wrath and uh, again avoiding future wrath uh we see uh this we see and this was when the children of israel co uh, came out of egypt uh we see uh the grandson of aaron whose name was phineas and what was going on uh with them at that what was going on in this particular portion of scripture is that a, a man of Israel brought a strange woman into the camp. Let me first say this is that uh, when you have to understand that uh, it wasn't only uh, the physical offspring or the, uh, the physical lineage of Abraham that came out of Egypt uh, with the uh, uh, with the children of Israel, they they adopted people into the nation of Israel, uh, also that weren't actually of the physical loins of Abraham. So he, but he brought this strange woman that wasn't uh, uh, among them, and he took this this man took this woman to the tent, and 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 it seemed nobody would do anything about it. So Phineas got up, took the javelin in his hand, as you heard us read today, and Phineas thrust her through. And the man through, and then the Bible says uh, right here. It says that uh, uh, it says that the plague was stayed from Israel. Uh, uh, the plague was stayed from Israel uh, because of what Phineas uh, did. But there was twenty four thousand people that died in the plague. Uh, essentially, because nobody wanted to, to take action. You see, so uh, he turned. Phineas by his actions and that that may seem overtly aggressive, uh, especially those people who call themselves New Testament believers, as if there would be a New Testament without the Tanakh of the Old Testament. And, and these people that say, well, that's some Old Testament stuff. They don't understand. Uh, they don't understand many things. And, and I think the first thing that people that would say what Phineas did was some Old Testament stuff don't understand but the, the words of Jesus when Jesus was confronting the people and he told these people, he said, if you believe Moses, you will believe in me because Moses wrote of me. So Jesus come along in the New Testament, not that uh, in the, 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 the eternal, he wasn't always present because we know that the uh, first chapter in the gospel according to John, first verse says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, right? So th that, that argument is not valid that that's some Old Testament stuff and Jesus didn't come to abolish the law, but to what? Fulfill it. You see, because if Jesus abolished the law, he would, he would have to abolish himself because, again, the Bible says in the beginning was the word. I don't have to go over that again because Jesus is the word. You can't separate Jesus from the Lord, Jesus from uh, uh, the word because, again, Jesus is the word. So because Phineas did this thing, God, this pleased the Lord. Listen to what this says. And it says, 
uh, uh, Phineas, the son of, uh, well, the grandson of Aaron, turned away my wrath, and this is God speaking from the children of Israel, while, uh, uh, while he was zealous for uh, for my sake among them, and I and I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy, and and he also gave Phineas because Phineas did this thing, he gave him the everlasting covenant of the priesthood, and he gave him an everlasting covenant of peace for an act of in our minds, what would be murder? Hmm. Hmm. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this is because so there is so much wrath in many of your lives, in the life of your, 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 your fellowship, your church, your congregation, at work, uh, in your family. You There is so much wrath that goes with uh, uh, those relationships, the wrath of neglect of a relationship, the wrath of divorce in a relationship, the wrath of uh, a parent not having a relationship uh, with their children, the, uh, uh, a wrath that goes along with feeling underappreciated. So what Phineas did was well pleasing to the Lord. Why? Because God demands a blood atonement for sin. That's just how it is. God demands a blood sacrifice. Now, I'm not saying that these two filthy vessels that uh, Phineas uh, 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 killed were uh, 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 the sacrifice that God demands. But I am saying this. His actions pleased the Lord and the plague was stayed because only 24,000 actually died in that particular plague. It could have been many, many more had not Phineas picked up the javelin and uh, uh, avoided uh, the future wrath of God on the whole nation of Israel because we read right here uh, where it says it uh, uh, that uh, 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 because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel so uh, he got uh, he had that zeal for the Lord that had him pick up uh, pick this javelin up and kill these people and God is well Please, with zeal for his namesake. Now, we also have to remember uh, in, in the New Testament, not that these the New, New Testament and Old Testament don't fit together. We have to remember that uh, 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 the, the scripture had said uh, that, that you shouldn't be lifted up as a novice. But you have to have a zeal for the Lord. What kind of zeal? The same zeal that caused Jesus in the second chapter of John, right around the 15th verse, to chase, chase the money changers out of the temple. And you know the beautiful thing about that? The, the disciples, when Jesus did that and chased the money changers out of the temple, the, the disciples remembered that the scripture had said, this is the second chapter of the Gospel of John says, that, O oh Lord, the zeal for your house has eaten me up. So uh, Phineas did his thing. Jesus chased the money changers uh, out of the temple. And that particular scriptures that the disciples uh, remembered was in the 69th number of Psalms. I just want to uh, uh, let you uh, know that. So and, and I there's something that I need to say. And there is something that uh, uh, I just uh, uh, I just been uh, it's been on my spirit. And, and it's just clearly communicated to me. And I have to say this. Uh, and, and what I have to say is, you may not believe this, um, but God will kill you. God will kill you. God, Jesus will slay you. The Holy Ghost will slay you physically. Uh, uh, God will send an angel to kill you. And I say that because of this. Um, and, and, and again, we're back to that. Well, that's some Old Testament stuff. That's not some Old Testament stuff. But because what you have to understand is God's of uh, the way to uh, uh, one way to avoid future wrath with God is in the main way to avoid what we're calling today future wrath of God or more plagues coming on your family. The plague of brokenness, the plague of molestation, the plague of divorce, uh, the, the, the plague of lack and all of these plagues that people suffer, one way to avoid his future wrath is to get in and cut the cancer out right away and deal with the issue. Uh, and just to show you that this isn't this uh, uh, people in the Bible uh, uh, killing folk, 
uh, and it pleasing the Lord. Just so you understand that this is not just some Old Testament mess uh, for you untrained and unlearned people. I'm going to tell you, uh, read Acts in the 12th chapter, people. Uh, what happened was Herod, okay, Herod, uh, 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 Herod killed uh, uh, a guy named John who 